what is inflation? It's not really well understood. Some people think it's CPI. CPI is the rate at which a market basket of consumer goods is going up, but right. the government gets to pick the basket. I've noticed. Okay. If I pick things like uh, Domino's Pizza and streaming YouTube videos, they will never go up in price. I can actually, uh, I can actually adjust the basket, so I just pick things that don't go up in price. The, shape, the case Schiller index is up 27% year over year, you know, in July. So the price of that average single family home is up 27%. Homes in Canada up 15%. The S&P index is up 34% this year over 12 months. What's the inflation rate? If you wanted to buy a basket of desirable stocks, the inflation rate is the S&P index. So... I can calculate any inflation rate I want. Inflation is a, a vector. If, if I want to be rich, then I need to buy scarce, desirable assets. So my inflation rate is the rate at which Picasso's and Leonardo da Vinci paintings and stocks and, and uh, property in New York City is going up in price, or a house in the Hamptons. That's a high inflation rate. If I want to be a consumer and live in my parents' basement and order Domino's pizza and take Uber's, and watch Netflix and stream YouTube, the inflation rate will be the CPI. It'll be very low. So you can have any inflation rate you want. Uh, as a practical matter, the best inflation rate for an investor or for anybody that wants to stay wealthy or be wealthy, if you're concerned about maintaining your economic purchasing power, it's the monetary inflation rate, the rate at which the supply of money is expanding. The supply of money expanded maybe 10% for a decade before COVID, and the S&P went up 10% a year. You know, we know the money supply expanded 30% post-COVID. The S&P is up 34%. The Fed stepped on, the, on uh, the money printer. The same with the EU central bank. In the Western world, in the strongest countries, we see, uh, we see the money supply expanding 20 25% or more per year. The currency is collapsing. It's, lo it's, it's losing its value. It's being devalued. In, in uh, weaker countries, go to Argentina, the official uh, inflation rate's 45%, the unofficial inflation rate's 85%. Go to Venezuela, the inflation rate, I mean, it, the currency's collapsed 98%, 99% in a year. Uh, same in Lebanon, 90% currency collapse in a year. So, what you have right now going on in the world is currency collapse, which we call inflation. And the mainstream view of inflation is it's only CPI, and sometimes it's PCE. It's, it's an index of things not including the highly volatile food and energy. <laughs> right. But in, but in what universe can you live without food and energy? Exactly. But, but it's not really good. Like, common sense says... If, if everybody tells me inflation rate's 2% or 5%, but the houses are costing 20% more, 15% more, and everything, if you talk to anybody that manufactures anything, they'll say that the prices are up 20%, 25% year over year. So how is it I'm supposed to actually buy something? How do you buy a share of stock that went up 34% a year when you got a CPI adjustment of 2% or 5%? So it sounds like the people causing the inflation are lying about the inflation. Classically, I, I just, I just, first of all, if you define inflation as the CPI, you're using simple arithmetic to describe the economy. You can know, you can't define, you can't describe the economy and model it with simple arithmetic any more than you could describe fluid dynamics or aerodynamics with simple arithmetic, right? The fluid is flowing around right. the airfoil. You have to have multi-dimensional you know, algebra and vector calculus to describe a complicated phenomena. The economy is a complicated phenomena. Another way to say it is the price of everything is, is varying everywhere at different rates all the time. Right. right. Common sense says the price of housing in the Hamptons is going up at a different rate than the price of land in Kansas. And the, and the price will be going, and the price in a certain jurisdiction for a certain use, subject to certain regulations, will go up at a different rate than another jurisdiction for another use. So the problem is inflation. Inflation is a phenomenon whereby uh, a government authority prints more currency, right? And why do they print more currency? Because if I want to pay a trillion dollar bill, I either have to tax you a trillion dollars or I have to print a trillion dollars of money. Turns out that it's a lot easier to print money than it is to tax people. And so it's either inflation or taxation. Throughout the history of the world, 
from Roman emperors before. You know, Every single coinage system, every monetary system ever established collapsed because of inflation. If you look at the history of, of the Sumerian states, you know, the, the Persian states, the Greek states, the Roman states, Middle East, look at all the, all the Renaissance Italian states, look at every king of England. You, if you just go forward, you find every one of these currencies started by issuing, I issue a coin with this much gold in it, and then I cut it, and I cut it, and then I go to silver, and then I go to copper, and then I coat it with some brass or some nickel. You remember what happened in the U.S. where we, we yeah. used to actually have silver? Silver quarters, yeah. And now we don't because the silver was more valuable than the quarter. Yes. Why, right? We're debasing the currency, right? So the problem is inflation. And so, inflation, just to be really clear about what you just said, which was fascinating, is caused by expanding the money supply. Yes. Sim simply put, you live in a town, there's a hundred nice houses, there's a million dollars in the money supply, the mayor prints another million dollars, distributes it to the citizens, what's the price of the house do? Right. And so, and you're, so you're saying that inflation is always the cause of the collapse of the currency, and the collapse of the currency sounds to me like it's the cause of the collapse of the civilization. Yep. Because if... If you look at all these wars, right, how long does a war go on? It go, in World War I, every single nation went off the gold standard within a week of the declaration of World War I. The Germans, the French, the, the Brits, the Americans, we printed money. Uh, the money got debased. There was rampant inflation. Eventually, after four years, you can print money for about four years before you collapse the currency, and then you don't have any means to fight the war. The Germans sued for peace because they ran out of money after four years. World War II, we ran out of money in four years. Vietnam, you know, we paid for it with inflation. Eventually, um, eventually Nixon had to go off the gold standard because they printed so much money, they couldn't redeem the gold. They defaulted on it. We went to the fiat standard, and uh, we just began to print more money.